I'll just quickly uh, summarize what I talked about there so that um, it's available for the recording. So here we are. Uh, the challenge, we've, we're going to put the challenge in the center there. Um, and then around that, we're going to think about the actors and the factors that are affecting that. Um, so you can see up here are the social ones, um, such as culture, education, governance, behavior, and so forth. Uh, over here are the economic ones, uh, things around finance, commerce, logistics, security, and so forth. Down here, te technological, energy, uh, construction, manufacturing, um, might be around information or information technology. Over here are environmental factors, uh, materials, water, atmosphere, food, and so forth. And uh, this would be a kind of rapid, it will be a rapid kind of mapping exercise where we're going to post up our stickies around this challenge that we think are effective. And we'll, we'll try and draw some connections between them. How do we think there may be, uh, are they intersecting? Are they affecting each other? So it's, it's essentially a very rapid uh, kind of mapping exercise. And then once we finish that, we're going to go on to the next section here, which is thinking about the constraints. Um, what are the limitations we face within each of those areas? Um, that are holding us back from really changing this system or uh, making progress on this challenge. So again, reiterate through those different dimensions there. And then finally, on the outer circle here, we're gonna ideate around how might we find places to intervene that would affect uh, these constraints or overcome these constraints um, so that we can actually uh, influence the dynamic here and potentially shift the sh system or make progress uh, with this challenge that we we face. So I'm going to share the share the um, link again for those who have just joined uh, to join me on the mirror board here. That's the canvas, um, and we're going to use that today. Um, but firstly, it's over here. Firstly, we need a challenge. So what challenge are we going to choose? I want to do a little dot voting. Please join me on the board here. Hopefully, you can find it. It's on the left hand side of the big board and I want you to choose one of these and uh, make a vote just by dragging your dot over the one that you want us to uh, experiment with today. Is everybody able to find the board and everybody know how to use the mirror board? Anybody need help? Everybody happy? Everybody understand what I've said? Any, anything I can clarify? Any questions before we stay going? Okay, it looks like we're going to go with homelessness. That one seems to have won out here. So, so this is the first part of uh, the exercise. Um, for us to really define, it, can we move the canvas back into the center? I'll lock it down now. Um, for us to really define, you know, what is the issue? What is the challenge we're dealing with here? Um, so uh, let's let's think about that. Um, there we go. We'll lock it down. Okay, we'll put up a sticky in the center here. And uh, what's what's our challenge? Homelessness. And does anybody want to share any any ideas on that? How can we refine our understanding of that? What is really the problem here? Does anyone like to try and? define more clearly what is the actual problem we're facing here? Maybe I think uh, maybe psychological problems, not only economical, no? I think. Well, those are, one of the those are one of the factors. They aren't actually the issue, are they? I mean, the issue is something like uh, people without 
homes, something like that, isn't it? Or people sleeping on the street. You know, some issues they'll be they'll be simpler to kind of define what we mean um, than others, but it's useful to actually iterate. Um, not just assume you know what the problem is, but actually do a bit of research, a bit of insight. Of course, we're just experimenting and we're going quickly through all of this, but actually if we're really taking this challenge, you want to do a bit of research beforehand. Is this about uh, people sleeping on the streets? Something like that. Anybody else want to kind of define what this challenge really is here in the center or what the issue is? Isn't, uh, J Josh, yep. isn't, isn't it um, the right of every human being to have somewhere safe to sleep? Yeah, not bad. Do you want to post that up, Brian? Uh, have yeah. You, got, yeah. you see, unsteady jobs is not the problem. It's not the issue here. That's a factor, isn't it? Right. So actually, that's going to go out here somewhere. Um, I'm not sure. We'll talk about that afterwards. Right. But actually in this circle here, all we're trying to do is really clarify what we mean by this uh, challenge because there's different ways of positioning this, you know. Homelessness would mean something different, likely to the mayor of a city as it does to the actual person who's sleeping on the street, as it does to me or you. So we need to get a bit clearer about that first. Hey Jonas, this is Chris. So strike. Um, hey, I hey, think Chris. it is a matter. I think it is a matter of access. There are plenty of homes. Lots of people who have lots of homes, and lots of people who have no access to homes. Mm. So this is you, uh, people without access to shelter, sanitation, safety. That one wasn't mine, but um, mm. I agree with it. <laughs> yeah, you see, that's a good point. Um, we've slightly we shifted the question from, you know, people sleeping on the streets to one more about access. And that reframes it quite a bit. Um, as you say, there's probably enough homes. Um, and when we put it into the context, when we say access, we're saying there's a problem that we can't really connect those people to the homes. Um, so it's, it's, this is about framing the challenge that we have. And it's super important. Uh, we've found in, in other sessions we've done, um, not me, but other people. So what, what do we have here? Uh, people disconnected from caring, carrying capacity of community, particularly shelters, okay? Every human being deserves somewhere safe to sleep. Is that really the problem or is that kind of a statement? It's more a statement that we're making, isn't it? Uh, about what our, our expectations and our values and so forth, I'd say. Um, I agree with that. I think it's about values and beliefs, isn't it? Mm. I agree with that. So I think you can see, uh, we're not going to spend too much time here now, but I think you'll see that this is really a key part. You shouldn't uh, just skip over this and say, okay, I know what the problem is, homelessness, everybody knows what the problem of homelessness is. Um, I think a lot of work can be done, a lot of value can really, you're setting the stage here, right, for the whole discussion that follows. So access to meals it's obviously one dimension to it it's not the actual problem we're talking about um you know if it's poverty then or, or hunger that that might be the issue um okay so uh let's leave that there uh that's the first uh, little part of it i'll share the link again for those people who are, who are just joining now um we're going to move on to the next section where we're thinking about um the factors and the actors. So what are the things that are affecting this situation here? That's the question we want. Um, obviously around this situation of lack of access to shelter is a whole set of uh, factors and actors, uh, both people, organizations, but also you know, factors such as climate and so forth. Um, that are affecting this. And we want to do, essentially this is a mapping exercise, but it's kind of an express one because um, you know we're just doing an ideation exercise here. So let's 
move to the second um, circle. And as I said, we're trying to think about this holistically. So we've laid out four different dimensions there, as, as I mentioned, social, economic, technological, environmental. You can see them uh, there. And then we just kind of laid out a few different dimensions there. It could be cultural, you know, it could be to do with the media. Some of these will have more relevance in certain, certain challenges uh, relative to other ones. Um, you know, atmosphere may not have too much to do with the challenge we face here, but if it was climate change, then we'd be uh, more on that end, that'd be more relevant. Uh, but you can see here, you know, things around uh, maybe media and, and, and finance and so forth are gonna be relevant. So please uh, jump in. And, um, you know, if you have something general like jobs, we don't have a category there. So you can just put it under economy, right? Um, or, you know, if you think it's something to do with politics or regulation, you put it above governance. Um, if you think it's something to do with kind of behaviors of people, you put it around culture there, so on and so forth. Let's take, let's take uh, maybe five, 10 minutes to do that. This is a really core part of the whole thing. And of course we want to, let's maybe uh, shrink our stickies down a little bit so that we can uh, have enough space here. And uh, also feel free to draw connections. So if you want to draw a connection, you just drag it out like that. Um, and connect it. I'll reduce the size of this. Any questions? Everybody have a link? Everybody know what they're doing? Please keep your stickies uh, a reasonable size. Feel free to change the color if you wish.
Okay, uh, remember to, um, if you have time to start thinking about linkages between them, right? It's quite important, the connections. Let's, uh, let's just take a look at this, uh, what we've got so far. Um, okay, so just for the people who have joined a bit late, I'll just recap what we're doing. So we're using the Leverage Points Canvas. Um, this is it over here. You can find it on our website by clicking there. Um, it's uh, an ideation uh, process for finding uh, leverage points. And firstly, we're putting our challenge in the center here, and we chose the challenge of uh, homelessness. We put it in the center there. We had a quick think about uh, how to frame that challenge. And we're now mapping out, we have been mapping out the factors and the actors affecting that, social, economic, environmental, technological, and so forth. Um, and after this, we'll go on to think about the, the constraints that, that we have along those dimensions and then how we may overcome them. But let's take a look at what we've got here. Um, so this is obviously, it's quite a social issue really. Um, so we've obviously got a lot of stuff going on here in the kind of social dimension. And I mean, that's one aspect, each challenge, if, as I said, if we took climate or if we took food or if we took uh, cybersecurity, you know, it's going to be skewed in certain directions. So that's one, one thing to note, but let's take a look at what we've got here. So foster shame, thinking about here, here we have uh, education and uh, culture. So a lot of stuff around culture. Uh, changing culture about meaning, failure and success, classism and racism, yeah, meritocracy, uh, blame on individuals for starting from a disadvantaged point, uh, short-sighted cruel policies against weakest members of society, typically uh, viewed as personal failure rather than circumstances. Okay, those are some of the cultural, psychological factors. No support, family breakdown, um, historical disenfranchisement from home loans, and neighborhood development. Yep, it's kind of a social and economic one also. Degraded educational experience for kids who are living through homelessness. So is there any way we can kind of cluster these or, or connect these? We're, we're starting to get some connections, it's good to see. Adverse childhood events. So that's obviously gonna be connected to like family breakdown here, isn't it? Uh, let's connect those up. Um, it's hard to get out uh, once you're in. Yeah. People have a uh, bias against the homeless. Okay, so that goes down to kind of class and kind of race down here also. Imbalance of perspective uh, being voiced, i.e. we never heard here directly from the homeless. Yeah, some people have less opportunity than others, lack of equality in society. So these are obviously related discrimination against minorities. And this, this here, little nexus there. Governance, we don't have much up here. I just put in, uh, you know, regulations obviously gonna affect this. There's a lot of housing regulation. Uh, they can be restrictive or they can the enabling, income inequality, unsteady jobs. Anybody want to comment on what we have here? Uh, how did you, how did you find this? Uh, hello, Jose. What I, I really I can't found is the human dimension because the human dimension in those cases I think is really important, like psychological. What what happened with that people? No, yeah. what are the, the problems? Yeah, it's a good point, right? We don't. I mean, obviously that's going in the social sector here. So you can you can what you do if you don't have a category, you just put it around social, right? Um, so as I said, you know, Gabrielle, one aspect is that 
it depends on the kind of issue, right? If, if this is an environmental one, there's going to be a lot of stuff around environments and it'll be difficult to find all the right categories. So you can kind of cluster them. As I said, this is a social one. So you can kind of cluster them around here. Um, yeah. Anybody else? Obviously we can't do a kind of an exhaustive categorization of everything. Ici, ben, merci de me rappeler. Je voulais simplement savoir, je, je suis très pressé là, je voulais simplement savoir si ça va mieux. Si. Comment Reste ici. <laughs> ok. Uh, anybody else want to. Attends, comment? alimenter. Alimentation To do with, with food or. Anybody else have uh, comments or or ideas about uh, what we have here? Lack of affordable housing. You see, construction is going to be part of it too, isn't it? Lack of labor for construction, uh, paying energy, uh, reduced access to energy supply. I mean, finance is going to be a big part of this over here too, isn't it? Like the way the whole economy is working. Um, jobs, can't access jobs, um, job support. This is going to be a little cluster here. Um, and finance, the way we're financing this whole system too, um, like this one here, speculation on property, our economic system is geared towards GDP and profit, not sustainable shelters. Yeah, right. Uh, that's an important one. And it obviously connects into finance, right? The way we're treating this as a kind of financial economic system instead of a, a, a thing that delivers the function of, of housing and so forth. having people to do uh, jobs. So there's a group there around employment. Yep, employment to provide income. Can't access jobs down here. Okay, great. <laughs> we got some interesting stuff going there. Um, obviously there's a lot of, in this particular one we're dealing with, right? There's a lot of stuff um, around economics and finance and jobs, employment. It's a kind of socioeconomic uh, challenge. And then there's a lot of stuff over here around um, culture. And also we're gonna have a lot of kind of psychological stuff also, you know, homeless person isn't just a homeless person. They normally have multiple kind of um, issues going on. Um, but of course, yeah, you gotta build these houses too, right? So it's definitely about construction. It's a bit about technology. If we could build affordable houses, if we had good construction materials, good uh, practices, potentially, we could uh, build uh, much more affordable houses, 3D printed houses or things like this. So there's stuff going on there too. So the whole point of this guys is to start thinking holistically about it, right? And not try and narrow it down to one specific thing, but look across this whole set of factors and try and start to think about how they're interrelated. So now uh, let's jump into the second, the third section here. Um, what are the kind of constraints uh, we experience um, in these different areas that are actually holding that uh, issue in place? Economic or financial, uh, social, technological and so forth. Please grab a sticky and start posting them up. What are the blockages? What are the limitations? What are the strength, uh, constraints uh, holding this dynamic in its current um, dysfunctional state, should we say, where people aren't getting homes? Let's take uh, five, 10 minutes to do that.
Okay, everybody know what we're doing? Anybody need help? Everybody have uh, the link they need? Okay, let's take a look at uh, some of these. I think one issue is that um, this outer circle is supposed to be the, the constraints, the limitations. This inner circle is supposed to be the factors that are affecting it. So I guess um, like we put a lot of the actual constraints in this limit, inner one, I think, um, like overprice of property due to speculation is probably the 
issue out here, but then in here should be, yeah, um, financing, of pro financing of homes, which would be a factor. Um, and then this here would be a constraint or a problem that that's experiencing. I think that's one thing. Um, but let's take a look at this. So poor health, like I was doing this, like poor health, if you take this employment, right, that's kind of one factor that's obviously going to affect things down here. And then that's a factor. And then out here, steady jobs are obviously unsteady jobs, um, but also, I guess, you know, poor health or poor mental health or things like this would affect your employment capacity. So that would be out there. Desire for ownership. Yeah, you can see in here, personal ownership. Everybody wants their own home instead of sharing. And then out here, the fact, uh, the desire for ownership rather than sharing. So I think it's good to try and make a kind of distinction there. Uh, these are just factors. And then these are the kind of problems, should we say, with those factors. Um, yeah. Okay, so definition of affordable homes. Yeah. So that would go with affordable homes. Do we have affordable homes here? It's good to be able to trace this through. So do we have affordable homes here somewhere? I guess it's going to be under commerce. So we'd have affordable homes. I think homes. it's manufacturing. Okay, you got it down down here, do you? Well, it's not, it's not lack of, no, it's not really because it's actually economics, right? Uh, the cost of homes is really determined. Manufacture is more like, how do we make them? So I'll make, maybe put that here. Okay. And then obviously that's gonna feed directly into um, homelessness pretty much. Um, so overpriced property, property speculation. Okay, understanding the problem complexity. That's more of a kind of psychological thing, isn't it? I think I'd put that over here with the cultural. When we say culture, we're thinking about behavior and psychology and all of this. So I'd put that connecting into culture, silo thinking. Yeah, these are all important things. Uh, Finding interventions too narrowly, linear, linear, linearly, either focused on individual or housing, um, not other causes. Yeah, these are important ones. Uh, and it could also link into kind of, this might be good up here in terms of how we tackle it, in terms of regulation and governance and so forth. Uh, public services, should we say. So lack of public interest in this problem, lack of, so this is uh, media and awareness around it, lack of societal involvement, lack of priority for supporting homeless people from government. Yes, yeah, so that's going over to government also. Um, lack of understanding by the public on the deep rooted nature of the issue. Yes, this is going down to kind of cultural, psychological things. Lack of parents. Yes, we've got family breakdown here and no support. So obviously feeding into that. Um, education as a business rather than teaching people to learn. Yeah. I'm sure that's really going to affect things too much here. Up here, we've got sustainable policies about homeless issues. Yes, yeah, so these are all going down to policy making and governance here. Politicians seeing all people rather than just the wealthy. Politicians seeing all people rather than just the wealthy. Okay. So not... not uh, making regulation for everyone. Policies that favor 
wealthy accumulation, uh, wealth accumulation, policies that favor wealth accumulation over uh, provisioning basic necessity. Yeah. So problem with regulation and, and governance. And all of this could kind of be linked to the psychological factors too down below that we kind of touched upon. Okay, uh, pretty cool. Uh, looking good at this stage. <laughs> We've got quite a, a mess. Maybe this is what a, a messy, wicked problem looks like. Uh, a big uh, mess like this. Well done, guys. Let's uh, stay going on the outside here. We're going to, in our last 10, 15 minutes, um, we want to think about how might we overcome those challenges, right? These are points, or generally points in the system where we might intervene to actually try and shift this dynamic. You know, that might be in terms of psychology we talked about down there, it might be, you know, affecting family, how we think about or how we support families. It might be in terms of policy and regulation. It might be, you know, affecting finance, it might be how we build homes, uh, materials and so forth. So on the outside here, please uh, grab a sticky and um, post up any ideas you have there. Also uh, try and link them up to anything we have here, you know, over overpriced property due to speculation. Well, how might we influence, uh, affect the system in some way to overcome that? Um, I'll share the link again for the late uh, comers.
Okay, let's take a look. Uh, we've just got five minutes left. So, wow, looking like a really big uh, mess at this stage, uh, but cool to see everything you've come up with. So take uh, talk to homeless people uh, themselves, what might help them. Uh, who posted that up? Anybody want to talk on that? What would that connect to in here? See, I had one over here about um, including people's, um, how might we get homeless people's voices in the room for policy making? Because we had down here a problem around policy makers just seeing the rich and not worrying about everyone. So I thought maybe one way would to be get these people in the room and, and get the policy makers interacting with them, understanding the, the problem and, and, and social workers and so forth. How might we encourage more balanced and inclusive view of all societies, uh, all the members in society's needs, which would feed into the policy making here, which may then um, yeah, affect uh, governments, uh, governance and um, maybe influence regulation in some way is one uh, approach up here, um, evolve uh, democratic systems to meet the ongoing needs. Um, okay, it's good to frame this as a kind of, how might we, how might we, how might we pose it as a question, I think, because we're trying to come up with um, places we're gonna intervene. So how might we evolve democratic systems to meet the ongoing needs? It's, it's still a bit, uh, you might want to get more specific, you know, add more things that get more specific there um, to help. Because, you know, this is where the output to all of this is going to be where we, we want to intervene in this system, right? So this one might be a bit too uh, big to bite off. We might want to kind of refine it a bit. Anyway, um, explore connection between wealth and uh, corporate tax and housing affordability. Um, yep. Yep. Um, that's going to be over here and the kind of uh, finance thing, I'd say. Um, it's going to link into, uh, yeah, the, the over this being too expensive. Um, okay, uh, so access to better quality food. You know, we had poor health here leading to unsta uh, unstable jobs, leading to unemployment. Unemployment is a big one uh, leading down into um, human uh, to, to access to accommodation and so forth. Access to exercise too is gonna affect health and so forth. I think it's good also to maybe scale things. Um, like the stickies here, you know, poor health is going to be a big one, right? And it's going to lead into unemployment. Unemployment is going to be a huge one, right? People, one of the main reasons we, we end up uh, homeless is because we don't have employment, we don't have income, and, you know, a big factor there is health. So it's good to kind of scale things so that we get a sense of what's uh, going on and uh, we can see the really big ones. Um, yeah, I think that's one thing to do as you go through. Uh, okay, so down here, um, how might we uh, con uh, colonization impact our values and choices? How might colonization impact our values and choices? Um, yeah, but it's not really a, a place we're going to, is that a place we're going to intervene? Is that something we can go and do? I don't, I don't think it is. How might colonization impact our values? You might have there, how might we change um, the narrative around co colonialization uh, to influence our values and choices? And also that wouldn't really be there, would it? It'd be, this is about um, kind of paradigms and mental models. So it's more over here. Um, how might we provide affordable energy? Yeah, so we had one here, energy supply uh, linked to homelessness, uh, reduced access to energy, so it's feeding into that. Um, public energy supply on the go. Yeah, even got a little thumbs up there, well done. You got two thumbs up and this goes into energy and looking at that aspect of it. So not enough uh, money for food, jobs for homeless people. Well, I'm not sure that really belongs down there. We had uh, jobs all the way over here. So I think we'll put it uh, up here somewhere and link it to 
um, employment, which is all the way in, in there. Okay, guys, um, that's our hour. Our time is up. Uh, pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Anybody want to make uh, comments or questions or anything you'd like to say about this? Any suggestions? How it may be made better? Any feedback on your experience? Feel free to unmute yourself and uh, chime in. That was really good, I think. And um, it was really good at how all together the pictures was this so rich. There is, yeah. I would have never been able to think about all of them myself, that's for sure. And if you had the time, you could do it properly, right? We just did a crash course. I think you would need more time, but if we really set this up properly, you could get something quite, you know, it's a bit of a mess and it's a bit all over the place and we aren't very educated on this topic and we, we, we went through it very quickly. So it's obviously a bit of a mess, but I think you can see how interesting exactly. stuff can, Exactly as you said, we got a bit of collective intelligence in terms of I was thinking about this and you were thinking about that and someone else was thinking. And then we did get things, you know, did get a nice, sometimes nice little pathways. We saw a problem in here and then we saw, you know, what the issue was and, and how we might influence that and so forth. So I think that's interesting. Um, thanks, for, thanks for that, Erica. Anybody else? Um, I would agree with Erica. Try to turn my camera on here. Um, I thought it was really, really well done. I really like this canvas. Um, like was mentioned, I, I work mostly in uh, with government problems and homelessness is one of them. I'm not such an expert on the finance and the technology and the manufacturing section. So while there was a good group of people going over there, I was up in the top corner of the government section with the nationals that I understand. So I really appreciate how um, this is more like a holistic approach mm -hmm. and it's a really easy when you look at it, it looks like a mess, but like when you're here from the beginning, you can kind of understand how the circles just continue to expand outward. And we were able to get all of this in just what an hour, mm. an hour or so of work. So I really like this. This is something that I hope I can use. And hopefully, I don't know if there's a way for us to get like a PDF capture of, of this final thing. I, this, this is beautiful mm. to me. <laughs> so thank you. Even, even if it's a mess, it's a beautiful mess. <laughs> it's like your, your, your daughter or your son, you know, you know, they're terrible, but you still love them. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll try and get some... Um, some, it'd be great to get a PDF. I'll see if that's possible. I'm not sure if it is. But um, I mean, a couple of points there. I mean, one one way to make it a bit less of a mess, as I said, would be to you know really get those key key factors and, and pull them out as you go along. You know, um, as I mentioned, unemployment or you know cost of materials or labor down here for construction. Um, these are going to be big ones. So I think as you go through, if you took more time and you really uh, pull those out and made them bigger that would be uh, one dimension to it. Um, I've just forgotten the other aspect I was gonna add uh, there. Oh, the other one was that, you know, you could adjust these, uh, L these factors here, right? Some people are saying there wasn't enough social factors because we're dealing with a social issue. So you could, you know, um, adapt this canvas so that you're adding more social factors in here because this is obviously a social one. You're kind of narrowing down the environmental ones. I think you, you want to be careful there because you don't want to kind of throw out the possibility that there could be found, um, by, you know, your own uh, perception of this kind of constraining it. Um, but I think you could uh, kind of expand the social issues because they're obviously and the economic ones because they're going to be key here if we're dealing with... Um, well, some issues, you know, climate change, it's going to be basically everything there, isn't it? It's going to be absolutely everything there, the technology, the, the social things. Some issues like this one are a bit more uh, specific. Um, yeah, so I think you can, can adjust those. Anybody else want to comment? Hi, Joss. Hello. Hey. All right, this is Des. Oh, let me see if I can just get my... I, I think what was really, or one of the really helpful parts of this, because I found it all really helpful, was the fact that it really high, highlights the need to look at this from various perspectives, different levels, mm. um, across all of these different systems. 
So at a government level, all the way through to that human individual level. And mm. all of these different factors are, you know, there's relationships there mm. that speak to me about collaborations, people developing relationships across sector boundaries mm. and, and, yeah, and, and working together at all these different levels. And this is something that needs to be ongoing rather than just flavor of the month. Well, that's exactly a bit. I mean, it captures the whole approach uh, that we're doing here in terms of systems change. You know, the systems thinking is about a holistic approach to where the kind of power of it is that we're not jumping into one kind of solution and trying to drill down to say, this is the problem. You know, if we could just fix this, we're stepping back, back and we're mapping the whole system. Um, even if we think, you know, the environmental factors have nothing to do with this, we still post them up there and we still try kind of try and get everything there because there may be something interrelated that we've kind of missed um and you know just having one person we all have a kind of narrow perception and we think oh finance is a problem or we think this is a problem of that and we get everyone here you get a canvas that kind of just puts them all out there then we can all put them up um and again as you say it's about potential for collaboration too because people can start to see oh i didn't know that energy was a big part of this and that energy was affecting this and that that i'm connected with so maybe i have to talk to those people over there you know so that is part of it as you say there's potential for collaboration seeing the whole thing so that you might find uh, new places to intervene and hopefully you know the connections could be really valuable if you got them if you did them well we could see oh well we saw here right there's 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 a lot going on in this place here around biases and um exclusion and so forth there was a lot going on over here around affordable homes obviously that's going to be a big uh, issue um, but you can start to see yeah kind of critical issues where there are a lot of connections and they may be where you're trying to influence it anyone else want to comment yeah josh uh, what i liked uh, particularly about this is that you could then You've got the challenge in the middle and you could refine that a little bit more and then you've got these connections so you could go out and say well what is the connection with the economics then and you could create smaller satellite um, pictures around the outside and try and establish the the critical the problem statements around all around the outside so you get a complete picture i think that would be quite interesting to do yeah Yep. And um, obviously, it's all about kind of time and, and resources and so forth. But definitely, if you had um, people's buy in, you had that time, you had that uh, input, you had some of the, you know, it is helpful to have uh, certain expertise in the room too. You know people who really know about this as opposed to us just to choosing a random topic. Um, but all of those, you know, increasing the investment of time and energy and knowledge on the subject, and you can really dig into important parts. And as you say, um, find things that you weren't aware of before. <clears throat> Anybody else before we wrap up? Okay, uh, let's leave it there. Um, this was a great exercise. As I said, I, I created this canvas and it's my first time using it. So uh, really useful. We're going to be doing one with our London hub in about uh, three weeks on, on mental health um, in collaboration with one or two other organizations. So I wel welcome you to join uh, then and we'll, uh, we'll have 90 minutes at that stage. Um, so you're welcome to join again then. Uh, thank you very much for joining. I'll try and get a PDF, uh, as you said. I'll post it in our, our community uh, website um, just here. So if you're a member, um, just look out there for it. It should go out to you by email. Um, yeah, let's leave it there. Uh, thank you very much for joining. It was a great exercise, guys. Uh, I'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Josh. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.